Hi guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to my channel, Cloud Garden UK. Today, I'm going to talk to you about pests and pollinators up here in the cloud garden. And I think it'll probably be interesting for you to see things from a different perspective, or if you're a fellow cloud gardener, something that you can relate to. Pests. <laughs> I do not get any natural pests up here on the cloud garden. I don't get any snails, slugs, ants, foxes. Somebody said on Instagram, uh, badgers, no badgers up here, no deer, no birds eating my seeds, squirrels, absolutely nothing, nada. Listen, listen, I can feel that negative energy coming through that camera. <laughs> I know that you're probably jealous of me right now, but listen, before you start getting vexed, let me just tell you, nature is really, really balanced. And so, yes, I might not get those awful brassica caterpillars, but I also do not get any butterflies. In fact, I don't get any of your major pollinators at all. So bees, wasps, um, anything like that I actually don't get and so that was one of the things that I needed to learn throughout the growing season last year because actually everything that I had I pollinated myself you wouldn't think it but pollinating all of these plants added on an extra 20 minutes or so to my daily tasks that time could have been better spent elsewhere on the garden One of the insects, actually, that I had to learn to love was the fly. Yep. Up here, I had to kind of accept that one of my main pollinators were flies. And so I did notice I would get things like hoverflies and I would get uh, quite large bottle flies. Um, and at first I used to kind of just shoo them away and then after doing a bit of research on pollinators I then realised, I know it sounds really silly, I then realised that, that flies did the job as well just not as efficiently as something like a bee. So now that I know that I have those kinds of insects I can still cater to them and so one of the things I'm trying to do this year is to increase the amount of cut flowers that I have up here in a cloud garden just to see as an experiment, what can I attract up here? And can I get, uh, can I get butterflies up here? Um, and can I attract bees as well? Uh, it's gonna be a really, really exciting project. So um, please, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you're subscribed so you can see whether or not I managed to achieve this goal. I was really quite specific though in what I said. I don't have any natural pests up here in the cloud garden. But if you follow me on Instagram at Cloud Gardener UK, you will know that from late January, I was already battling aphids. Now, I'm on the 18th floor, so it's pretty hard for me to believe that these little insects just flew up here to go and sit and eat my marigolds. I believe that they probably were introduced by myself through cheap compost. <laughs> I'm also one of those people who always goes to the reduced aisle to see what clearance plants and flowers are available. And I just think, oh my gosh, I need to give them a new home. What happens is I don't actually check the plant. And that's a really, really important lesson to learn is when you pick these things up, double check them and find out what is wrong with them before you introduce them to your home. And then also maybe quarantine them just for a little bit just so you, uh, you can see whether or not you're bringing home any unwanted pests into your garden. Now, the problem with having these aphids up here is I also have no beneficial insects up here either. And so because there's no balance up here, it means that their aphids, they spread their way all throughout the garden. This geranium was planted in some of that cheap compost. And as you can see, the aphids are all over it. They've even migrated over onto my rose bush. Yeah, and somehow I've got a rose bush up here, but we'll just ignore that. Last year in my growing season, I went through loads of different types of natural remedies and solutions to try and get rid of the aphids. 
But this year, what I am going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, ladybugs and also lace wings into the cloud garden just to try and help balance out those aphids and through the lace wings I'll also gain myself some extra pollinators as well. The lace wings have also actually been introduced into the indoor herb garden as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to document the release of the lace wings and the ladybirds into the cloud garden and also into the herb garden just to see what the benefits are and the difference that it makes to the garden. If this sounds like something that you'd be interested in following, please don't forget to press that subscribe button so that you know when I next upload a video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to press the like button. And if this is something that you've tried before, please let me know how it went down below in the comment section. Hopefully, see you again soon. Bye. This is Drogon, my biggest lacewing larvae, and look at him go.